How to call whitetail deer using a grunt call. That's right folks, in this video I'm going to talk about how to call whitetail deer using a grunt call, which is this piece right here. I'm doing a whole series though on how to use all these different types of pieces of equipment for calling whitetail deer. In this video, however, I'm going to focus on the grunt call. So I'm Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures and well known for my deer hunting and deer calling abilities. In this video, I'm going to share with you some hot tips on how to use a grunt call. I'm going to talk about what time of the season to use the grunt call, how to use the grunt call, how often you should call. So let's get started. One of the most common questions I get from especially new beginners to hunting is how often should I call? And the real key when it comes to calling deer, and I'm gonna mention this in every video I'm about to produce with all these different calls, the real key is the wind direction and where the deer might be. It's a bad idea to do calling if you think the deer are already downwind of you. Good chances are they're gonna wind you and not come in, but not only will they wind you and not come in, they're gonna identify where your hunting spot is and they're gonna to begin to avoid that area. So by calling, you're actually hurting that spot in, in the wrong, if you call in the wrong situation, you're hurting that spot, not just that day, but in the future as well. So pay attention to wind direction. When you're in your hunting spot, if you see a deer and it's upwind of you, go ahead and try to call. Now, let me give you an idea as far as your hunting setup. And this is hard to accomplish in some areas because some areas are very flat. But sometimes I like to use the topography to my advantage. I'm gonna give you an example. I was in a morning hunt. I'll, I'll provide a link for this video. I was in a morning hunt and uh, I was watching doe all throughout the morning. No bucks came by. So I usually have a time frame for, okay, I'll wait till about eight or nine in the morning for a buck. If I don't see one, then I'll shoot a doe. Well, no deers were around at that point, so I decided to, to call and a group of doe came in and I, I harvested a doe. Now the setup was I was on the top of a little drop off. So from where I was to how far that topography dropped off was probably about a 50 foot drop off from the top down to the bottom. So any deer that are down in the bottom and I'm way up in my tree stand, they're not gonna really be able to wind me. And that's exactly what happened. So there was some deer down on the bottom. I didn't know they were there. I let out a few calls. They came right up looking. Very often, the deer are gonna circle downwind of you. The wind was blowing that way. I was so high in a tree and it was a gentle breeze. My scent was way, way above their nose. They could never smell me. They thought they were safe coming in because they were coming from the downwind side. They were not safe. So when you're looking at a setup, Try to find ways that, such as that, where if the wind's blowing in that direction, the deer are not gonna be able to smell you. When you're in those situations, you're free to call just about as much as you want. You can, if you're bored, and some guys get bored, some girls get bored, and they just wanna start calling, you can call because the deer aren't gonna be able to wind you. If you're in a situation where they can wind you, let's say you're, you, you're on a bottom of a hill and the hill goes up this way, if the wind's blowing up the hill, you are done. Don't even dry, don't, don't mess it up even worse by trying to call. The wind direction is key when it comes to calling. Now let's, let's talk about the question, how often should you call? I call very sparingly. Maybe, I don't even call at all in a lot of situations, but, there are lots and lots of deer that I've harvested that I've called in from blind calling. No deer around, the wind's in my favor, I let out a few grunts, and they come in. Now, let me just talk about this real quick in the context of, well, let me finish, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So when it comes to how often should you call, if you're really struggling and trying to be patient and you're bored, try to limit yourself to about once every 15 minutes. If you overdo it, you're gonna, you could really ruin the spot. Um, but in general, if you can hold off for about once every 15 minutes, it's not too bad. So let's talk about the, the tone of the grunt for a minute. Just about every deer on a standard grunt sounds very similar. That's a little bit on the high end of a grunt. You might, you can go a little deeper than that. This has an adjustable reed in it. What I typically do is I set the reed where I want it and I'll even glue these together. This is like, 
I forget if I, I think I glued, yeah, I glued this one together. Um, you can separate this style of a grunt tube, um, but I had one fall apart on me once, so when I got to the tree, all I had was this, and I had no way of calling deer. So I just started gluing them together. You can set it and forget it. So set it around there, and uh, you're okay. So most of the deer sound pretty much the same. There is what some people call the buck roar or tending grunt. That's a lower, deeper kind of a grunt. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But in general, your grunts can be around there. Now I'm gonna teach you a trick that I've learned through a few hunting experiences. And I'm gonna start with the first hunting video I ever saw was in 1990. And uh, there was a hunt on this video where a doe came in and she did this. So she did a grunt and then a little bit more of like a hey, and then a grunt. And I was in a real life hunting situation about 20 years after that. And I was watching, I had a group of five doe under me within bow range, but I was waiting for a buck and they were eating acorns. And then a big doe came along the edge of the wood line over there. There's a field over there. She walked along the edge of the, the wood line and she did that same grunt series and all five doe ran to her. She must have been the head doe and was calling everybody together for the evening feed. And she went. <coughs> so it was a little bit of a rise uh, 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 like that. So if you can kind of repeat that type of a pattern, it's actually a, a way of the deer saying, come over here, come over here. And I have called in a lot of deer, especially a lot of doe, doing that. So what I'll typically do, and uh, this, this grunt call, I just pulled it up out of the closet and it's not sounding the best, but it still works. But what I'll typically do is I'll do the one grunt and then I'll broadcast like this and at the end I'll cover the tube because it's going to help get that drop off sound and then I'll do, take my hand off and do another grunt. So, And by moving it as I do it, I, you're also changing the direction. So if I was facing away from you, you would have a little bit harder time hearing me. I mean, the microphone is going to help pick it up, but picture you're outdoors and you're yelling to somebody, Hey, John, come over here. Now, if I'm facing the other way, Hey, John, come over here. It's going to be a lot quieter. So by moving the direction of where your tube is, if there's a deer over there, it's going to help drop off that sound. So it helps create some realism. So that grunt, longer grunt, grunt at the end, if you work on that, that is a hot way to call in deer, especially doe. Because in, in deer language, from my own experience, it's deer saying, come over here. Let's talk about the time of day and the time of season. I have had the most success calling in deer in the morning and in the evening. Not so much during the day. The deer aren't typically moving around a whole lot in general during the day. If there's a deer moving around and it's interested in coming, it'll come. Now I'm talking about, let's say the early season here. Um, so in the early season, in the mornings, I've had a lot of success calling in doe in the morning using a grunt tube. When I've had more success calling in bucks is in the evening, because in the evening, bucks tend to get together in that early season, late September, early October, and they get together in bachelor groups. So if, if there's a buck over here by himself and he doesn't have any other deer with him and no other bucks with him, he's gonna be looking for some bucks to hang out with when he gets to the feeding area or the area where the bucks like to meet up and spar. So by grunting a little bit, he might think, oh, there's that whoever. Let's, let's say there's Mr. Four Pointer over there. I'm gonna go hang out with him. Now, when I'm grunting in those scenarios, I don't use that same grunt series as often because in my experience, it's doe and doe are responding to that. When I'm dealing with buck, I'm just gonna do a few little ones here and there. So it'll be like this. Just throw out one, wait a little bit. Now let, and picture this, a buck's walking through the woods, you don't even see it, and you do a grunt. He's gonna stop and look. 
So I wait a little bit, let's say 20 seconds. So he's gonna look in that direction for a little while and eventually he's gonna turn and start walking again. And I'm gonna hit it again. So what happens is, especially with buck, and I've done this in multiple hunts. In fact, this buck right here, uh, I'm gonna get it for you. This buck right here, I was on public land in Maryland a couple years ago. This buck came in, I didn't get a shot at him. He started walking away and I called him back in. And here's what I did. When the buck started to walk away, I did a one single grunt. He learned, he, he turned and looked right at me. And I waited. You don't ever call when a deer is looking your direction. You will ruin your hunt by doing that because it's if it looks right in your direction and you grunt, it's gonna to expect to see a deer there. And when it doesn't see a deer, it knows something's not right, I'm not going. So anyway, I waited. And as soon as the deer tried to look away, I grunted and he looked back. And I just waited. And as soon as he tried to look away, I grunted and he looked back. What this does is it antagonizes the buck. I, anytime I've used this to where a buck is responsive, they have typically come in and I've gotten the shot. So anytime that deer is looking at you, you don't want to grunt, but when it looks away, it's like, darn it, I missed it. Where's that deer? And because they don't get an exact pinpoint. And a lot of times they'll come and they'll circle downwind. So you need to have, again, a good setup where the downwind side of you is gonna make that deer be close enough to where you can get a shot. Now, let's step back and let's say you're in a situation where you're blind calling. You don't see any deer. Maybe you're even frustrated. Maybe you're sick of not getting any deer action. Do it in that fashion and it's gonna increase your odds a hundredfold. So watch this. Yes, I'm, I'm actually pausing and you're sitting there watching me, but this is how long I'm waiting. I'm just giving you an example. So I'm waiting, and of course, in a hunting situation, I'm not making a noise. What I'm doing is I'm waiting long enough, picturing in my mind, how long is it gonna be till that deer looks away? You have to be patient doing this. So what's gonna happen is, the deer's gonna look. You don't even know where the deer is. He's looking and he's like, what, what, where's that deer at? And he's gonna look for a while, look for a while. Hmm, maybe I didn't, maybe I, maybe I misheard that. Oh, wait, wait, there it was again, you know? You gotta wait long enough to imagine that deer looking away. I'm telling you guys, girls, this is one of the most effective ways to get deer up on you. Now, here's another important thing. When you're calling, you have to really stay alert and not move a lot. Now what can happen, and especially pay attention to downwind side, because a good buck is gonna try to approach you from the downwind side. Let's say the wind's blowing this way, and there's a deer straight behind me, I don't even know it. So here's, you wanna look around real carefully before you start a call series, and you wanna move slow. One of the biggest things that ruins a hunt, especially for new people, is getting caught moving. So move slowly, look all around, give yourself a good look. Okay, now I'm gonna start the series. Now, I, I just turned my head. That's a lot of movement, so you wanna just try to be careful and just kinda of be watching, you know, and just try to slowly move your head. Now, if I'm in a tree stand, I got the tree here, which is helping to block my movement from deer behind me. It's important, especially in the early season, to keep a sharp eye because a lot of times the, the leaves aren't dry and crunchy yet in the early season, so you can't hear the deer approaching. Now, especially keep an eye out on the downwind side. Remember, it's over here. If I have a buck behind me, he's immediately gonna be circling over to this side. So I wanna pay a special attention to this side as time goes on. Now I'm gonna let another grunt out, right? And I just wanna really be kinda of using my eyes a lot, I'm not turning my head a lot, but when you're doing a call series, try to be really alert. And it's not a bad idea, if you're a bow hunter, have your bow in your hand. And I'll have the lanyard around my neck. So what I'll do, I'll slide this in my jacket after every grunt and be ready to shoot. Cause let's say, oop, there he is. I've got, now I've gotta gently 
turn and get my shot. Now, and that's, an, that's something you may even want to consider. Let's say this is the downwind side. I might even position my body. This is actually a good idea, positioning your body before you start the grunt series. Because let's say I'm doing the grunt series, and here comes a great big buck on the downwind side. Now I'm ready. I'm not, I don't have all this motion of turning my body in order to get the shot off. If you want to get a buck in the evening time, that last 45 minutes of daylight, that is a great grunt series to try and spread it out. Do it every 10, 15 minutes. Don't just constantly do it. And you want to make sure you're doing it when you can be really attentive. Now I want to talk about the tendon grunt or the buck roar, so, you know, depending on who you're talking to, they'll call it something different. That's a long drawn out grunt. You want to save that for right around the rut. So the very end of October into November, that's when you're going to start using that. And I have called in bucks using this. What it means in the deer world is a buck is going to breed a doe. So he will be with the doe. He, they're not breeding yet. He, and sometimes it could even be an expression of frustration. Like he really wants this to get going and it's not happening yet. So it's just a drawn out. You just do a long grunt like that. And sometimes they'll do like a short series at the end of it. But a lot of times they'll just do the roar and I've watched, uh, actually, the day before I shot this buck, I missed one bigger than him. Same exact genetics, just bigger, um, due to my rest failing. That's another story. But uh, he was doing the buck roar all morning long, chasing a group of like five different doe. He was doing that all morning. I watched him for like an hour doing that. And he just would run after him with that, doing that buck roar. Now, here's how this works for calling in a buck. If you're doing a little bit of grunting, and then you throw in one, a, a, another buck could think either, well, it's a buck tending a doe, or it was a doe grunting, and now a buck's coming in to tend the doe. The point is, if he's a good buck especially, he may want to come in and compete for that doe. So it can definitely help. Let's say you see a good buck off in the distance, you, you hit a few grunts, just you want to see if he's going to respond. If the deer doesn't respond, either he didn't hear you or he's not interested. So you do a grunt. Okay, no response. I'm just going to wait a second. Now I will actually point my grunt right at it and go a little louder if I have to, just try to get some attention. So if he doesn't look after that, then uh, all right, he's not interested. Uh, I might not push the envelope. I might still throw out a periodic grunt here and there to make him think like I'm a buck over here and I'm just basically saying get out of here. He may come and investigate, but I want to watch the body language. So if I see a buck and he's looking but not coming, that's when I may throw in the tending grunt. I've actually had a buck one time and I had another unfortunate experience where I nipped him and didn't get him. But I tried calling, I tried grunting and bleeding and everything. Nothing was bringing him in until I did the tending grunt. When I did the tending grunt, he's like, whoa, what's going on over there? And he came in, I had an eight yard shot and I just nipped the bottom of him. That was a long time ago and that was a heartbreaker. When you're in the rut, let's say the, the peak of the rut's on, bucks are cruising all day long. You don't have to worry as much about wind direction because with bucks cruising everywhere, it, it, you just never know where they're coming from or going to. And so you may get lucky and just have a, duck, a buck out of position from where you are. You can just do a little grunting throughout the day. And let's say there's a buck over there and he's upwind of you. He's going to come in possibly and he might not be as worried about circling around downwind first because they're just in breeding mode. And so they hear, oh, there's a grunt, you know, and they're going to walk over, especially your younger two and a half year olds, one and a half, sometimes even three and a half. Those younger bucks are especially through caution to the wind. So during the rut, you can call all day long, but preseason, you just, I usually save it for the morning and the evening and I don't go overboard. So folks, that is a somewhat of a comprehensive look of uh, grunting. And I will mention grunting in some of my other videos. I'm gonna do a video on bleating. I'm gonna do it on you know, rattling. 
I'm um, even going to talk about the snort wheeze. If you want to learn how to use that, I'm going to talk about that in another video. But I'm going to bring grunting back in some of those videos because grunting is the standard. I mean, this is the call you can use no matter what. Some of these other calls you're only going to use in certain situations. Like, you know, rattling, you're going to only use certain different types of rattling in certain situations. And the snort wheeze, you're going to probably use certain times of the year in certain situations where you might not in others. So stay tuned for the series. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe, share it with people. Click the, click the share button and email to people. Email to your hunting friends. Say, hey, here's some tips for using the grunt call. And I would love to grow my channel and I need your help to do that. So I'm doing a bow giveaway right now. I'm giving away a Matthews Vertex, Matthews Traverse. You get to pick. I'm also giving away an XOP tree stand. And I'm also giving away a Sharple Broadhead Sharpener all in December, on December 1st. And the way that I'm doing it is I'm putting a scripture verse in each video from June, the beginning of June 2019 to the end of November 2019 and I'm gonna have a registration in November to win these prizes and out of the people who register I'm gonna do a live broadcast on December 1st call somebody live and say hey what was the scripture verse from this specific video so if it's how to use a grunt call this video how to call whitetail deer using a grunt call whatever I end up naming this video I will ask what was the scripture verse for that video so the scripture verse for this episode is John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. So John 8, 31, 32. And so you're just giving me a summary of what the passage was. And I'm looking forward to the giveaway, and I look forward to all of you who participate in it. And if you haven't seen the previous videos that have scripture verses in them, I'm creating a playlist on my channel. You can go and just watch through the whole playlist. I would love it if you would subscribe, click the bell icon, get notified every time I do an upload so you get the next video. And until next time, the next calling video, which is coming up next, take care and God bless.